Deep within each individual lies a reservoir of tranquility. All and one can lay claim to this unchanging eternal bliss that is our true nature. Yoga in a nutshell is to keep the entire, the external, internal body clean, pure, sanctified, so that the mind flows without any barrier. To most practitioners in the West, yoga is merely a series of postures that offer physical benefits. This view confines the yoga experience to only what occurs on the mat. That aspect of yoga is just one of the thinnest slice in the entirety of yoga. I consider yoga to be the oldest spiritual tradition in the world. Soon there was a revolution in the concept of Indian civilization. Excavation at these sites brought to light the existence of the highly developed Indus civilization, which pushed back our knowledge of India's past by another 2,000 years. The same people who created this yogic tradition created a civilization that when you look at it today, you are astounded by its accomplishments. The yoga practitioners of today have only to gaze over their shoulders. Within view is an unbroken stream of creativity that connects them to ancient India. For all of these yoga systems, the goal is realization of the innermost self, um, whether, whether that's called Atman or Purusha, um, and there's various names for it. The practice of yoga is the practice of coming back to ourselves and rediscovering ourselves, and in fact coming to love ourselves and understanding that we're not separate from the totality. So we are whole, nested within larger and larger spheres of wholeness that extend out as far as the mind can extend itself, which as far as I know is infinite. Our goal and purpose of yogic practices and Ayurvedic balanced lifestyle is to have all prana available at any given moment to direct it directly up to Sahasrara, to the highest chakra. This flow of energy translates into dynamic stillness, nothing but skillful action. To the western shores, came many yogis in the hope of imparting their spiritual wealth, but with little impact. However, one man opened America's eyes to a new way of thinking. It wasn't until Swami Vivekananda came in 1893 to speak at the Parliament of Religions. He was such an inspiring speaker that he put, in a way, the whole country, the educated country, on fire. The physical yoga that the West has embraced can be traced back to the single-minded effort of one Brahmin yogi, Tirumalai Krishnamacharya. Krishnamacharya had great influence in the way yoga is practiced in the United States. Four of his main students, Iyengar, Patabi Joyce, Deskachar, his son, Indra Devi, had incredible wide influence on introducing yoga to our culture. He took postures out of obscurity, researched and refined them to perfection and brought them to the public stage. People learn to relax deeply. They are different out there in the world. Among all yoga masters, BKS Iyengar has played the most significant role in the introduction and spread of yoga in the West. I was born with the gift of illnesses one after the other from birth. So those gifts of unfortunate ill health made me to take to yoga. <laughs> Sometimes 
I'm asked, what is the point of yoga? It was created 5,000 years ago. How can it be relevant today? My answer is always the same. It was created by human beings for human beings. The human condition truly has not changed. Despite the cutting edge, quite dramatic benefits we could provide patients using new technology, it only further reinforced the realization that high-tech interventions can only bring so much to a patient who's ill. Yoga doesn't bring you a sense of peace and health and well-being. It's not like taking Valium. Rather, it helps you quiet down your mind and body so you can experience what your true nature is, really, which is to be peaceful until we disturb it. For me, yoga allows a wonderful integration of the body and the mind. Carl Jung said that Western psychology has not even begun to uh, understand the depths of a tradition like yoga. So Western psychology is in its infancy. Yoga is very old and therefore has gathered all kinds of information that we don't understand yet. If we practice, we begin to see more and more of just how beautiful and integrated and powerful it can be. It also, I think, with time will be shown to provide very measurable benefits. For example, allowing bone density to increase in older people, especially women. Perhaps influencing how your kidneys function. Definitely having an impact on blood pressure control. Maybe influencing cholesterol metabolism. Things that we don't have quite enough data yet, but we have very alluring tidbits of information that make it seem like yoga might play a wonderful role as a general health preserving therapy. And it's cheap and you can do it yourself. And it's hard to beat that as a general public policy wellness tool. So if we could master mind, we would have untold worlds open up to us. And yoga provides us that uh, promise.